let's uh, wrap up here then. And I'd just like to thank you all for uh, you know, stimulating discussion, but I'd like to maybe get your closing thoughts and Gareth, uh, messages for the community out there. So I think it's really exciting times. Um, the strategies have changed, um, maximizing response, um, minimizing toxicity, segmenting patients into different subgroups. It really is um, something that's going to come into um, general activity over the next couple of years. So uh, really exciting times. Still a very fluid situation. Sagar? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the recommendation I would have is, is have a plan. Know what your goals are early on. Know who sort of your go-to uh, center is that you can get guidance from. And know what the trials are that you have in your area because patients are coming and looking up trials ahead of time and they want access to these drugs. Tom, is this a curable disease? I, always, I think we can cure probably 10% of the patients now, and perhaps with the new drugs, with monoclonal antibodies together with IMIDs and proteasome inhibitors, maybe we'll increase that cure fraction to 20%, but we need to do better than that. And maybe it is genomics that will help us do better than that. Maybe it is monitoring MRD. Maybe it is with some of these new drugs. You know, I'm really excited about immunotherapies. I'm, I'm like Yvonne. I think immunotherapies are, are the future in myeloma, especially the checkpoint inhibitors the bispecific uh, T-cell engagers. And you know, if we can figure out the best way to use CAR T-cells, if it can clear up MRD and cure patients, it'd really be dramatic. Immunotherapy, Ivan, the future? Well, yes. I mean, uh, I think... Uh, Your time has come? Well, the, ti <laughs> the time has come. <laughs> no, but I think, that, no, and all joking aside, I mean, this is, this is enthusiasm based on clinical data. It's not theoretical enthusiasm. I think... But I would also caution to, to not be over-optimistic and, and delivering something that it can't. And I, don't want, and, and I think what we need to understand is how to position immunotherapy at the various stages from induction, transplant, relapse, maintenance, et cetera, right. um, in the context of the plethora of other drugs that are coming out. And so this is an incredibly exciting time in myeloma, um, illustrated by, I think, many of the complexities that we've highlighted here today. Sab, we've talked about a lot of very expensive agents, and we're piling on with new immunotherapies. How are we going to address the economics of this? Do you think there's a solution? I think we probably need to have another 90-minute uh, session to have that discussion. Uh, but I think some, some of the health economic issues will be mitigated by the drugs, some of the drugs becoming generic in a few years. Uh, but you're right. I think that that's the big elephant in the room. How can we, how can we address the cost? Do you um, think we can uh, develop regimens which are explosively active enough that we may not need to treat for forever? I think that that would be the key. So, you know, we've, we've been talking about continuous therapy, keeping the disease under check, but if we have um, a, a phenomenal arch up for myeloma that we can use for a finite amount of time, get patients to very good depths of response, and we get five or six years of PFS out of that, that would be worth it. Well, thank you, everybody. This was a great discussion. And on behalf of our panel, we'd like to thank you, the audience, for joining us. Thank you, everybody.